want to welcome everyone back. Uh, I know I had a lot of DMs this past week. Last week, we did run a replay. Uh, I was in, uh, in the process of, of moving on multiple fronts. As you can see, different background tonight. Um, in the process of getting an actual studio built out. So uh, that, that's very exciting, but I'm excited to be back with you guys. I know I had promised a Q&A that was supposed to be last week, but now we're going to get an opportunity to dive in and do a Q&A tonight. So any questions, comments, anything at all you'd like to talk about, drop your comments in the chat and we will get to them. So I, I wanted to start out to, tonight, and I've had this conversation with a handful of people in my office already. And uh, we, we've had a, uh, in the last 48 hours, had another high profile dad um, get drugged through the mud. Uh, those of you in the Midwest, specifically the state of Missouri, uh, your former governor who, who had his issues, um, Eric Gretens, he, uh, he is the leading candidate uh, in the Republican primary for the United States Senate. And he, uh, he's the leading candidate. It's a, it's a super majority Republican state, um, a state that, that our own Kenneth Rosa, Mark Ludwig, a, a lot of individuals in that state doing a lot of great work around, um, around getting some equal and shared parenting legislation pushed through. That's been a a six, eight year, year run they've had, and they've come close a couple times, but, uh, he is the leading candidate for U S Senate. And this, uh, in, in the recent past, he, he got divorced in 2018. He was the governor in Missouri. He got accused of all sorts of crimes, um, around tampering with evidence, different, different things like that. Um, it all stemmed from him being accused of having an extramarital affair, <clears throat> which he's admitted to. And uh, then in, uh, so he stepped down from the governorship and this was kind of his revival of his political career. And in the last several weeks, he has filed for full custody of his boys. After he stepped down as governor, his, uh, him and his wife divorced and she moved to Texas. Well, recently she filed or, or he filed for full custody. And uh, this past week, apparently he was on spring break with his boys. She was in Washington, D.C. Who knows what she was doing in Washington, D.C. And uh, all of a sudden, allegations that he was abusive come out. Now, there's no pictures. There's no evidence. There's been really minimal mention of it leading up to these allegations. And this is a divorce that took place in 2018-2019. Um, so it, it really goes to show you that, uh, it doesn't really matter who you are. This is, this is a high profile politician. This is an individual with all of the connections in the world, all the financial backing in the world. And his ex-wife, after he files for full custody, comes out with all of these allegations in regards to domestic violence. Um, there's a lot of theories, a lot of thought behind it. There are a couple of his primary challengers uh, who have jumped on the bandwagon and asked him to step out of the race. Uh, so it, it may not purely be her, but it, it appears that, uh, hey, another dad files for full custody. And uh, rather than litigating it out on the merits, um, it appears that, that mom's gone down the path of... Um, making domestic violence allegations. And you never want to make light of domestic violence. If it occurs, there should be punishment. There should be, um, you should have to pay for that. But uh, it, it, this is four years after their divorce, never a mention of it. And he's on the verge of getting his, really his career and his livelihood back. Uh, if he wins this primary, in all likelihood, he's going to be a U.S. Senator. And these allegations come out. So uh, I know we've had, it's, Greg Ellis has came on live with Rosa, Alec Baldwin, Johnny Depp. There have been so many high profile men who have, have gone through that. And just, just another one to show that it doesn't matter uh, really where um, really where you're at in life, your stature, whether you're rich, you're poor, you're powerful, you're not. Um, and it, it's, it, it, it's continues to happen. Um, 
Antonio with a comment here. Time to start uh, start during uh, slander for false and defaming allegations. In addition to time, start suspending attorneys' licenses for willingly endorsing this behavior. Uh, that's a uh, yeah. I, I think uh, the 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 behind the scenes, what happens in in family court and with attorneys. I think that it would surprise a lot of people, and it's it's concerning and. It's uh, there's a lot of good attorneys, but but there are a lot of them that are stuck in the system, and it's this is the way we do things, and um, and they're willing to endorse this these things because, candidly, I think a lot of them don't have personal connection connection to family law and don't really understand what uh, what it means or or what they're actually dealing with, and so they're just out there to play the game. I, I say this: I worked in fitness, I worked in professional college and amateur sports, the most competitive situation I was ever in was law school. By nature to be successful, a lot of lawyers have to be competitive. And I, I think you're dead on. There are rules in place. Um, my my friend Sean Kohlmeyer is, uh, has done a lot of work in, in publicizing uh, some of these, these rules and some things that attorneys need to abide by. We need better enforcement mechanisms. So I, I, I agree with you. Um, I think it's a situation where um, I, I listened, I found about the, uh, the Gretton situation from, um, Andy Frischilla and his, his podcast, Real AF. And he talked about it today. And I, I did, did my research on it. It's, it's the same situation a lot of dads go through. So yeah, I think, I think that, uh, that there needs to be some pushback on, on these types of things. <clears throat> and, uh, Rhonda, really good point. Fathers suffer from domestic violence too. 100%. So studies show that anywhere between it's about 40 and 70% of victims of domestic violence are male. Most studies show it's it's relatively equal uh, in terms of domestic violence victims. The biggest problem that I see on a day-to-day basis um, and that I think in general we see is men's lack of willingness to report. Um, I, I've had guys come in my office that they've been stabbed, they've been shot at, they've been hit with a hammer, um, they've been beat to a pulp and there are photographs of it, but it's two or three years later. So it's a type of situation where they, whether they felt ashamed, whether they felt as if they were, it, it wasn't the manly thing to do to come forward. Men are victims just as much as women are, but men are less likely to report that. So, um, We've we've uh, I've I've gotten on my soapbox there. I, I want to dive in and I want to um, answer your questions. So keep dropping questions in the comments, um, and we will get to as many of them as possible. Let me dig through here. I love how active you guys are tonight. Antonio here again. This is this is a really good point. So uh, Antonio says, I feel that many men do not report domestic violence. However, law enforcement is extremely reluctant to enforce these laws against women. Um, I, I would say anecdotally, I would tend to agree with that statement. Um, in in California, essentially, if uh, essentially if there's domestic violence has occurred they are required to arrest one person. And I, I would venture, especially when there are kids in the home and it involves kids, I think there is a, it, it is much more likely for the man to be arrested than the woman. Um, there, there used to be a card that, that some officers would carry around to determine who to arrest. And a lot of the factors on that tilted towards, we're going to arrest the man and then we'll figure the rest of this out. <clears throat> 